Hello, hello, hello. Today we are going to be talking about Victorian decor ideas. I did another video where I mentioned decor ideas and the history behind them, and I talk about entirely different decor ideas. So if you want to check that out, you can. I will link it here. But before we talk about the specific items, I wanted to just briefly speak about what Victorian interior design looked like. So the Victorian period started in 1837 and ended in 1901. The Victorian interior design is a that originated in United Kingdom during the Victorian era. The Victorian style was one of ornate wallpapers, fancy decor, vibrant colors, cluttering of items, and the unique blending of designs and patterns around the world. Interior rooms were decorated to reflect a family's taste, status, and wealth. A traditional Victorian color palette was dark and consisted of dark, rich colors. Rooms would have dark wood furniture, fixtures, tiled floors, floral wallpapers, and heavy tapestries. During this time period when most homes were heated by coal, darker colors hid the effects of smoke and ash on the furniture, which is why dark colors were so common. And anything I can find that is reminiscent of an item or specific to an item, I will list it below. The first item is a grandfather clock. The first grandfather clock was made in the 1670s and it was attributed to a British clock maker named William Clement. And at the time it was called a long case clock or a floor clock. I feel like these are a bit harder to come by, but I have seen them at estate sales for a relatively affordable price. The next item is a secretary desk or a writing desk. This normally contains fitted drawers, one of which can be pulled out and the front lowered to provide a flat writing surface. There are many variations of this basic design that you can find, but going for a darker wood tone would fit perfectly within the Victorian period. The next item is the pedestal table. Larger pedestal tables were used for dining in small homes, while others were used as side or display tables. I managed to snag a pedestal table for only $20 off of Facebook Marketplace, but if you are looking for a authentic one, you will pay much more. The next item is a vanity, or as it was originally called, a toilet table. Most vanities would have compartments for cosmetics and even jewelry, and this would be the place where you would get ready for a big party or just your day. Now, I did read somewhere that they were used in a bathroom for general hygiene as well and included a wash basin underneath a fold-down top. Although, when I did my research, I was not able to find a photo that contained the wash basin in the vanity at all, so take that with a grain of salt. The next item is a rocking chair. I would look for this in a deep wood color or maybe something that's a bit fancier with some cushion to it. But all in all, this is probably one of the easiest things to find just because it's a common item you will see in homes today. The next item is a settee or a double-ended chaise. I found so many different names for this couch that I didn't really know what to call it here, so I'm just gonna leave it at two names. But these are incredibly beautiful with ornate wood carvings. I've actually found these on Facebook Marketplace where someone was just giving it away for next to nothing or just giving it away for free in mint condition. So, because many homes are moving in a more modern direction as I am, you're gonna have a really easy time finding these items because most people just don't want them. The next item is a vanity mirror. So if you don't want the whole vanity, I totally understand, that can be very pricey. You can just go for that mirror instead to give the vibe of a vanity and also just to reflect light into your space. And if you wanna do your makeup there, you totally can. You just sit it on a console table and you are done. It's its own little vanity that you've created. The next item is a Canterbury rack. It's said that this rack was originally used for sheet music, but nowadays they would be perfect for magazines, books, newspapers, and of course sheet music if you are a musician. The next item is relatively easy and that is an easel. Now you could buy an easel today and put some ornate wood detailing on it to resemble something like this. And if you give a new easel a nice espresso stain, it would fit perfectly into the Victorian period. The next item is a paint set. This might be my favorite one because you could easily DIY this by putting your paint supplies into a wooden box, but you can also find these in stores because they are still made today. 
just check out your local arts and crafts store like Michael's Hobby Lobby to look for one there. Another item you could look for is a tabletop mirror. This simply would go on your vanity, it could go in your bathroom, it could go on a shelf. There are many ways to display this item and it's easy to find something that looks similar to this even if it's not historically accurate. The next item you can look for are Delft charger plates or Delft ware. The style originated around the 1600s, but this is a common plate with a similar design style that I see when I'm thrifting all the time and you can get them for next to nothing. Not only is this a usable item, but it's also an item that you can display on your walls. The next item is a perfume bottle. Again, another item that's relatively easy to obtain and I also found this travel one, I think that's what this is. Does this not look like the Deluminator from Harry Potter? It reminds me of it so much, I had to put it in this video. You can find these new, which in my opinion, I still love just as much as the old ones. The next item is a mortar and pestle. A mortar and pestle is a very historical item that was used to crush herbs, spices, loaves of sugar, grains, and other ingredients, along with using it to grind down soaps and for the preparation of perfumes. Now the next few items are a letter opener and a quill and ink. I thought these items were perfect to mention just because if you got a secretary desk, these are great additions to display and actually use. The next item is a candelabra. Depending on the height of these, they can get pretty pricey. I would recommend checking out estate sales and of course, offer up Facebook Marketplace, whatever secondhand app you have on your phone. I did get mine through Amazon, but ever since then, I have been seeing them at estate sales. The next one is relatively easy and that's just a round wooden frame. These are great for displaying old portraits in. The next item is a silver tea set. Normally when I go thrifting to Goodwill, they have an entire section dedicated to silver items. Now it may not be real silver, but it does look the same. The next item is a globe. I highly recommend you do not get a globe that is vintage just because the map will look entirely different, but I personally like my globes to be up to date. The next item is a wall sconce candle holder. I absolutely love these. It's one of my favorite items to display on a wall. I cannot have a home without it. I just think they are gorgeous. I look for mine in a gold finish with some ornate detailing, and I like to use some LED candles that flicker and are remote controlled just so I don't burn down my house. The next item are core bells. Core bells are an instant way to elevate any space by making it appear more elegant and luxurious. You can use them to display items or you can use them as accents to add to your home. The next item is a chalmay. So this is a type of vase that is beautifully detailed. You can use it to display some dried flowers, fresh flowers. Next item are embroidered pillows. You can find these at estate sales. I swear, I'm gonna mention estate sales a lot just because I recently discovered them and they are the best thing ever. But you can look up some vintage pillowcases that may not technically be embroidered and they will be more affordable. The next item is easy and that is by getting ornate frames. You can easily DIY these. I know it might look crazy when you look at these frames, you're like, how can I DIY this? But you can by getting some ornate wood appliques or onlays to add to your frames and spray paint it gold. But keep in mind, the frame does not have to be gold. It can be a dark wood as well. The next item is an hourglass. This is something you can easily find new and make it look old or just keep it new. It still fits the theme. The next item is a washboard. This is how you would go about washing your clothes. And it's funny, I did not realize when this was invented until I made this video and I had one in my home growing up. The next item is a chamber stick or a candle holder. I like these because if you are worried about lighting candle tapers, I feel this is the best option for holding one just because you have that catch all at the bottom. I also like that you can find these for a very inexpensive price, brand new. The next item is a desk clock. Now we already talked about grandfather clocks, but just clocks in general are just old as time, pun intended. Now, of course, the next thing you can add to your home are some maps. Again, 
would not recommend going with an older map because it will not be up to date, but you can 100% find a map that looks antique to display in your home. Well, that is it for all of the items on my list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some ideas. I will also say, try to thrift these items first. Sometimes these things can get very expensive, especially if it is truly authentic. A site I like to look for authentic historical items is firstdibs.com. No, this is not sponsored. I just wanted to let you know. It's a good place to go and look up historical items if you're trying to get ideas for a certain decade or if you're trying to see if something you have is authentic and from that period. It's just a really good website to refer to in my opinion. Thank you for being here, for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.